Yo, what's up everyone? So yeah, I wanted to show you how I built this modern kitchen island with custom back panel and a solid white oak top. And I must say, it turned out sick. So yeah, just follow along and I'll show you how I did it. So I didn't make the actual carcasses from scratch. I purchased the three cabinets and all the hardware and the drawer fronts locally from a local cabinet supplier. It was just way quicker and cheaper to buy them flat pack rather than make them myself. So I start off by leveling the kick for the three cabinets to sit on. You want to make sure that this is dead level and plumb. I fix the kick to the ground by using L brackets on all the feet. I then start dropping the cabinets in place, marking out all the cutouts for the electrical that I needed. I also had to cut out the duct in for the downdraft cooked up. Once I was happy with the position of the cabinets, I fixed all three cabinets together using inch and a quarter screws. I then fixed the cabinets down to the kick by drilling through the underside of the cabinet. I then installed the floor, but that's a whole other video. For the back panel, I used two sheets of 3 8 of an inch MDF. So I had no real plan for the pattern, all I know is I wanted it geometric style to kind of match the tiles in the kitchen. So I kind of just drew one triangle shape and then just went from there, allowing about a half an inch in between each shape. I then cut all those pieces out using my track saw. Once I was happy with all the pieces, I numbered each one and began to sand them. I sand all the faces to 150 grit and all the edges to 400 grit. Because I absolutely suck at painting, I sent this, the two side panels and the drawer fronts off to get professionally painted. But for this, I imagine you could probably get a pretty decent result just using a roller. So when I got all my pieces back from the paint shop, I tried to stick them down together using wood glue, which was a huge fail because wood glue doesn't stick to paint. So I peeled them all off and then stuck them down with construction adhesive which worked perfectly. I also want to add that the reason why we didn't stick the pieces down before we painted them was because I was afraid that we was gonna struggle getting the paint in between the gaps. So yeah. Once the adhesive had dried, I brought it in and began to install it. I shimmed it level with the cabinets, making sure there's the same gap all the way along. I then set my scribe to that height and then checked it again all the way down the cabinets, making sure it's the same height all the way down. I applied some painter's tape so I could see my scribe. As the mark was fairly straight, I could cut the whole thing with my track saw.
I attach the panel to the cabinets by using screws through the back of the cabinets into the panel, making sure the screws that I use don't go all the way through. I attach the side panels the same way. I cut and scribed the finished kick to size, and then attached it to the cabinets using painter's depth. The reason for this is so that there's enough grab for it to sit there, but if I want to take it off in the future, I can. So now it's time to make the countertop. I used white oak for this just because of like the classy feel you get with white oak. So I started off by jointing one face and one edge of about 600 board foot of white oak. I then brought it down to thickness using my planer. The actual final thickness of the countertop was inch and a quarter. And then finally, I ripped all the boards down to equal width. I put all the planks into a position where all the grains line up really well making sure that orientate all the end grain to allow for wood movement. I then mark out for dominoes. Although dominoes aren't really necessary for this, it just helps line the boards up when I come to glue them. And plus, it doesn't really hurt to have the extra strength there. Also, you'll notice that I have an unpaid intern, uh, Rad Dad Grandad, has come to help me out for a couple of weeks. So you'll see his hand poking in and out the screen every so often. I glue the boards up sparingly using Type On 2. I clamped all the pieces together and then clamped them down flat to a couple of old spirit levels. I then applied a few more clamps on top. This just helps keep the whole thing nice and flat. Cut the top to size using my track saw. I also use my track saw to cut out for the cooktop. Because you can't get into tight corners with a track saw, I finished it off with my jigsaw. I then sanded the whole top using good sanding technique all the way up to 220 grit. I also eased the edges by hand. For the finish, I used Emmett's Good Stuff, which is commonly used for wooden countertops and butcher blocks. 
Because the countertop is going to be used for food preparation a lot, I wanted to use the most food safe finish that I could find. And this had great reviews. I applied it sparingly by hand with a white pad. I then buffed it dry using my polish sander also with a white pad. I repeated these steps another four times allowing eight hours to dry in between. Once the top had fully dried, me and Rad Grandad brought it into place. I made sure that I had an equal overhang all the way around. I then attached the top using the same techniques as I did with the side panel and the back panel. Oi, get back to work. I polished the top by hand with a white pad to get a nice glossy sheen, and then I dropped the cooktop into place. I then put in all the drawers and attached all the hardware. And there you have it, done. I'm so stoked how this turned out. It turned out way better than I can even imagine. I just want to thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please like and subscribe. 